one planet, 7.3 billion people, only one you. Life offers us many opportunities and learning experiences. Are you ready to explore and discover this beautiful planet, the life and energy all around us, the spiritual world, and what is unseen, along with your own personal soul adventure? Mark Lanehart, the intuitive prospector, is the spiritual connection you have been prospecting for. Internationally known as a tested and professional clairvoyant medium and spiritual advisor, Mark's work as a metaphysical teacher, medical instructor, radio show host, inspirational writer, and hiking guide are here to help you on a journey of self-discovery, healing, inspiration, education, and a whole lot of spiritual awesomeness. Dare to dream. Dare to explore. Dare to live. For more information on Mark's spiritual practice in Seattle, Washington, please visit marklanehart.com or internet search The Intuitive Prospector. You know, have that higher perspective of... All right, hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're at in this beautiful planet of ours. I'm Mark Lanehart, the Intuitive Prospector, here for another Metaphysical Mocha Monday. Let me just make sure everything is aligned and that we are broadcasting. It does say that we are live on Facebook, uh, so we'll just give it just a, a second for everybody to get on board and join me uh, for Monday mornings, uh, every Monday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, just brewed me up a nice cup of uh, vanilla latte with hemp milk. So cheers to you. Join me for coffee and tea every Monday here on Metaphysical Mocha Mondays. And then at 8.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, we'll come right back here into the Zoom room for uh, the Healing Cafe. Live reading, spiritual chats, Q&A. Uh, you can come into the Zoom room with me and have a reading with me. It's always a lot of fun. I always like to say it's, it, it's literally like a spiritual box of chocolates. So um, if everybody could just let me know that the sound quality is okay, I'm trying to find where I'm at here on the Intuitive Prospector page. I'm in here somewhere, um, some way, somehow. Uh, there we go. Okay. So it looks like we are broadcasting. Okay. So this morning, um, I wanted to, I was sitting in meditation, me and, and the child, uh, some of you know him as Baby Yoda. Um and we were talking uh, or we were meditating on what I wanted to talk about today. And it was kind of, you know, it's kind of a, it, it's a hard topic. Uh, there's a lot that's taken place this last week with the national election, what's going on with COVID, uh, which is, by the way, at its all time high. So please stay safe and, uh, you know, please stay uh, properly informed and stay healthy out there uh, because we're seeing uh, the cases spike to even greater than what they were uh, starting back in March. So I know it's been a tough year. I know we've gone through a lot. We've done it together. Um, I keep reminding my spiritual development group, uh, this too shall pass, but you can't have the rainbows without a little bit of rain. But this morning, I wanted to talk about grace, grieving, and gratitude. And I know a lot of people are celebrating for the, you know, the outcome of the election. But at the same time, uh, you know, it's given me perspective this last year 
to really just kind of, you know, learn a lot about myself and kind of go deeper with my spiritual journey. I've learned a lot about myself. I've learned a lot about people. I've really learned how to, you know, sometimes dig down into grace. And I, I wanted to read something um, for you if I could. And it's, it, it's uh, something that Mother Teresa had said. And it, it goes like this. It says, people are often unreasonable and self-centered. And I think you could, you know, think about the times and where we're at with, you know, social media and maybe even some of your friends or in some of your family. And she talked about people are often unreasonable and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of ulterior motive, motives. Be kind anyway. If you're honest, people may cheat you. Be honest anyway. If you find happiness, people may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today may be forgotten tomorrow. Do good. Give the world the best you have, and it may never be enough. Give your best anyway. For you see, in the end, it is between you and whatever God is to you. It was never between you and them anyway. And that's from Mother Teresa of Calcutta. And it's just, it's a quote that I have resonated with for a long time with my own grace, because I can tell you, you guys, that I have not received a lot of grace from people. I've not received kindness from people, especially if I'm, uh, if I'm speaking up, if I'm speaking up to something that's morally wrong, uh, not politically, morally wrong, people want to label me, you know, I've been called everything from a Marxist who wants to see people die, uh, to um, a, a, a liberal left, uh, you know, and it, it's just interesting how people, you know, accuse you of ulterior motives when you're really just speaking truth, because you have a moral obligation to do that when you see something that's wrong, you see something you should say something. Uh, and I had to do that a lot this year. I've had to clean up my friends list on social media. Social media has taught me a lot about uh, grace as well, as far as what she talked about. Uh, you know, you may find happiness, but people may be jealous uh, of, of you and the work that you do and be competitive with you. And that's just, you know, that's the human experience, I guess. Um, and so this morning, I, and I know that there are some people that are really celebrating uh, the outcome of the presidential election. I know some people are grieving as well. And I'm really trying to see both sides because this election taught me a lot, not about who won or who lost, but it taught me a lot about the character of our nation and, and what people still stand for and what people will accept and tolerate. And in the beginning of this year, I talked with my predictions about the roaring 20s and how difficult this year was going to be. Uh, I didn't throw in a pandemic on top of that, but I did talk about the, the things that would come up, including the great coming together. And I do believe that we have that opportunity now to really come together. Forgiveness, grace, there is grieving that's taking place right now because remember people, there's, when there's a winner and a loser, there are people that are celebrating and there are people that are, are angry or upset. But I really think, and that's why I'm wearing purple today. The color purple, uh, I don't affiliate with a political party, even though some people want to put me into a political party uh, because I, you know, when I'm speaking up, um, you know, morally. Um, but the couple, the color purple for me today represents the color blue and the color red. And bringing colors together creates purple. And I believe with the United States of America, we don't need to have blue states or red states anymore. We need to have purple states. We need to be able to see perspective. But at the same time, just when it comes to social media, guys, I've learned a lot about social uh, social media. And if you have not um, seen The Social Dilemma on Netflix, I highly, highly recommend it. It gave me such a different perspective of how we interact with social media. Um, you know, I've had a lot of people come at me on social media uh, to judge me, to be opinionated, to compete, to try to tear me down. And I got caught up in it for a little bit personally, took things personally. But as you know, the years have gone by, I don't take it personally anymore. I just delete the comment or I just don't, re I refuse to, you know, engage with that dialect or that rhetoric. Um, and I've seen a lot this year. I had to clean up my friends list, people that I thought I was friends with that, you know, support a different way of life, a different ideology. That's great. They can. No opinion or judgment for me. I just don't choose to be around that type of behavior, um, you know. When it comes to my political view, I'm pretty much against anything that kills people or harms our planet. It's pretty much that simple. So I, I feel that you know this last year with the pandemic, uh, the political unrest, the great divide in the United States, um, uh, racism, systemic racism, equality, pay for everybody, women's rights. 
this is all kind of brewing and we're building for next year, which I'll have my predictions. I'll be taking the month of December off to do my predictions for the upcoming year. But the upcoming year of 2021 is called the year of freedom adventure. Uh, it's a five energy um, and the five energy is all about um, expanding into new territories. And I really do believe that, you know, leadership does matter. They always say that a head rots from the, uh, a fish rots from the head down. And I, I think that the, the current president elect is going to have some really difficult times ahead of him. But I know that he'll come from a place of kindness, caring, compassion, and grace. And he's willing to work with people on the other side, which I think that's important that we need to work with other people. We need to see different perspectives. And that's what grace is about. Grace is uh, sometimes smiling in the face of a bully. When somebody is saying something negative to you or saying something bad about you, that you just say, you know, smile and say, and so it is, and move on about your life. That, that's what grace, um, you know, that's what grace can be for you. Be the one who nurtures and builds, be the one who has understanding and forgive heart and forgiving heart, one who looks for the best in people, leave people better than you found them. That's a lot of what grace is. Um, you know, I, I try to find grace every day. And I also understand the grieving aspect of what people may be feeling right now and trying to see their perspective. Um, like I said, I saw a lot more people come out to, um, you know, uh, vote for Trump, the other guy, uh, and support his rhetoric and his ideology, which was surprising to me, but it tells me a story there that, that people want to be listened to. And it'll be interesting as we move forward with divided government, um, leadership of the Democrats, House of the Democrats, but the Senate of the Republicans, uh, because I think, it, it, you know, democracy has always been messy, but it's, I think it's a lesson um, for all of us in America to be purple states, not red states, not blue states, but be purple states of the United States of America so we can start to work together and start to move forward and get past all this little riffraff that we seem to find ourselves in. And that includes what you do on social media, guys. Um, I highly recommend The Social Dilemma. Uh, it was very mind opening to me. It's changed how I do my work on social media today and probably how I'll work in the future. Um, but I just wanna acknowledge you know, um, this week because it's Veterans Day, I, I do want to acknowledge our veterans. I know that it's Remembrance Day over or was yesterday over in my friends and uh, colleagues over in England, in the UK, in Europe. Um, they celebrated Remembrance Day for their Veterans Day. So I just want to say thank you to all who have served our military folk, uh, which will be for us here in the United States is Wednesday. Uh, I myself as a veteran, and that's why I take the Constitution and uh, the American way of life so seriously and so passionately because I, I took an oath. And I will always stand up uh, to bullies. I will always stand up and speak what is right and speak truth to power because that is an obligation that we have. Uh, whether they're a Republican, whether a Democrat or whether they're independent, uh, you have a right to speak up and you can do it with you know, words of kindness, caring and compassion. That's grace as well, knowing that you, know, you may not get that grace back, but we keep moving forward. And I've learned this year, not, I, not, not, I, not only about myself, but I've learned of trying to see different perspectives. And I always say the art of spiritualism is the ability to shift your perspective. And that's, you know, my, my views are not always right. It's not my way or the highway. I understand that. Uh, but I really do try to see another person's perspective. But at the same time, I don't need to be friends with people like that on social media, because if there was no social media, I probably wouldn't be engaging with them anyway. So um, it, it, you know, take grace, but don't mistake in kindness for weakness. Set your boundaries, you know, uh, stand up for what's right. I always say that grace means that all of our mistakes now serve a purpose instead of serving a shame. I think all of us can have grace moving forward. Uh, some of the actions of our past are shameful, uh, mine included, uh, but where grace flows, mercy thrives. And I think that's where we can go because the words that I predicted at the beginning of this year were the great coming together, homeostasis, self-mastery, and sustainability. And that has not changed for me. I do, I do feel as we move into the year of the five, uh, there's going to be some great, exciting changes coming for us, but it's not going to be uh, easy. It's still going to be difficult. And we still have to build and work together uh, to start to have this purple state of being, you know, ex accepting red and blue with a combination to create the purple. That's why they call it purple states when they're not sure which way the state's going to go. So I thought I would just be very patriotic as a veteran to wear my purple uh, because I support everybody. I support both sides. I support the United States of America. 
And, um, you know, for those that are celebrating, congratulations. For those that are grieving, I say honor your grief, but do it in a peaceful way. Do it in a way that, you know, you can mourn the loss. It's always important to honor your grief by mourning, but do it in a way that starts to build up people, not tear people down. And, uh, you know, let's have a peaceful transfer of power. The people have spoken. It is about we, the people. Uh, and let's do it with peace and grace and forgiveness and gratitude and honor. You know, I, I always say that, you know, gratitude is the memory of the heart. And, and that's uh, really important. Um, start each day with a positive thought and a grateful heart. Uh, I had posted on my Intuitive Prospector page. Um, was it my it might have been on my personal page, I can't remember, but it was a quote from Alex Trebek, who, if you guys watch Jeopardy, as I have over the years, I've always been fascinated with uh, Jeopardy just for the fact of his education, his knowledge, his laughter that he brought to a lot of us. Um, he passed away, and it was kind of unexpectedly, but he said, this was a quote from Alex Trebek, and I just want to say, you know, rest in peace, uh, or I should say, uh, who is Alex Trebek, and what is rest in peace that so you always had to say that with jeopardy but he said one day at a time with a positive attitude anything is possible and we've lost a lot of people this year i know a lot of people have transitioned in the spirit world from covid and my heart goes my, my heart and prayers go out to you and your families if you've been impacted my heart and prayers and my thoughts go out to our first responders our healthcare heroes uh, our police officers our firefighters our emts our paramedics everybody that's out there to make the supply chain go um, we're still in for some difficult months ahead, you guys. And until there's a vaccine, if there's a vaccine, uh, we've got to pay attention because the cases here in the United States have spiked drastically. I believe there was 126,000 new cases yesterday, which means the more, the death rate is going to follow that. So one day at a time with a positive attitude, anything is possible. And, uh, that's the advice from Alex Trebek. So let me look at the time here. Um, again, if you want to uh, get on my page, uh, make sure to like or subscribe to the Intuitive Prospector page and join over the 30,000 followers of my work. Thank you so much for following uh, my journey and just sharing a soul adventure with me. You can find me also on YouTube. Make sure to get on my YouTube channel uh, because this show uh, goes over my YouTube channel. My spiritual takeout shows are over on Instagram and YouTube. So make sure to follow me on Instagram or YouTube. The best place to go just to connect with me is marklanehart.com or internet search the intuitive prospector so I can help you uh, do a little spiritual prospecting to find that diamond within because we all have that diamond within. The question is, are we exploring to discover it or are we just going about our life and just, uh, you know, status quo? It's really up to you, free will and choice. So um, today's show, we're talking about grace. We're talking about grieving. We're talking about gratitude. And it's important to have grace. Uh, you know, grace wins every time. And it's been a difficult year. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. It's, you know, I've had to really be mindful of some of the people that I associate with moving forward on social media. Uh, you know, there's a lot of, um, uh, there's a lot of fake out there. There's a lot of people that are jealous or competitive um, and don't come from a place of grace. Um, but, you know, I always, I always just say, you know, um, God's grace is not an excuse to sin, but rather a reason to love and serve him more fully. And, you know, whatever God is for you, um, I always talk about the, the God within, uh, the God spark that makes your heart go, um, you know, moving into that to um, acceptance and forgiveness and, you know, having grace when, you know, people will not show you it back. It is, it is not easy to do, I'm telling you, but um, like I said, I've really had to try to just rise above some of this uh, this year from, you know, standing up to, you know, what I see is wrong and morally wrong, not politically wrong, morally wrong. And people put me into a label or people call me things, um, even just with the work I do as a medium um, and as a psychic, you're going to, you're going to have that out in the public forum. And um, sometimes that's, you know, I am human and, and I, I can, you know, take that on. Um, but I wanted to say that, you know, there's a quote from C.S. Lewis, and I love C.S. Lewis. He wrote the Chronicles of Narnia. He's one of my favorite authors. And he says, relying on God has to begin all over again every day as if nothing had yet been done. And I think that there's a lot of truth to that. You know, it's, it's what Alex Trebek was saying about, you know, um, every day, one day at a time. And, you know, kind of going back to what Mother Teresa said, people are often unreasonable and self-centered. We see that a lot today. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are honest, people may cheat you. Be honest anyway. If you find happiness, people may be jealous. Be 
be happy anyway. The good you do today may be forgotten tomorrow. That is true. Uh, do good. Give the world your best. You have it and you may never be enough. Give your best anyway. For you see in the end, it is between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. And that's a, just a quote I opened up with Mother Teresa uh, of Calcutta, um, a very amazing woman with grace and uh, gratitude. So uh, I'm going to give you your crystal for the week, your uh, positive affirmation for the week, and your numerology for the number for the week. And then we'll get ready for um, the healing cafe. So let me grab another cup of tea. Take a nice deep breath with me. Make sure to follow me over on Insight Timer. Uh, I've got my latest meditation out called The Pathways to Self-Forgiveness. Um, it's free. I hope that you'll check that out. And uh, we'll have uh, the podcast show of Inspired Living Radio this Wednesday on Veterans Day. We'll, uh, we'll be honoring all of our veterans and talking about the same topic, grace, gratitude, or grace, grieving, and gratitude, because there's a lot of people that are happy today, but there's also a lot of people that are grieving, and we want to acknowledge everybody as the United States of America. It's been a very interesting year for sure. Um, so again, start each day with a positive thought and a grateful heart. Uh, gratitude can take you a lot, a long way. Um, I'm just thinking of uh, Maya Angelou who had said, this is a wonderful day. I've never seen this one before. This is a new day and you've never seen this one before. So let's, uh, let's move into grace. Let's move into honoring our grief, whatever that is for you today, and let's move into a state of gratitude. The crystal I have for you this week is uh, the crystal of magnetite. It is also known as lodge stone. Some of you may know it as lodge stone. Uh, it, it's a more of a, a black brownish gray color. Uh, it's easily obtained uh, from all the countries around the world. But what I picked for it today is because it, it is a um, magnetite is magnetic. And it has a powerful positive negative polarity. And I've picked this stone because today there's a lot of positive, but on the other side, because this country is still so divided, there's a lot of negative. So we want to start bringing the polarities together to achieve um, homeostasis, equality for, you know, homeostasis is a center road, is a way of not left, not right, not blue, not red, but purple. Again, red and blue together make purple. And this stone can be easily, uh, it can be used as magnetic therapy, working with the body's own bi biomagnetic field. We do have our own uh, HEF, the human energy field is what science would refer to it as. And um, it, it just aligns with the earth and it's a healing stone. So again, the crystal this week is magnetite, also known as lodge stone. Uh, your card for the week, let me switch over to the zoom view so I can make sure I'm showing you on camera right. Um, is domestic harmony. This was interesting because six plus four, four is the year that we're in. Six represents love, self-love. Six plus four adds up to 10. The 10 actually breaks down to the one. The one means we're just beginning with this. This means independence, but it also talks about domestic harmony, the color blue, which is the color of Mother Teresa. So this was a card that I picked for you to this morning domestic harmony. And then of course the card for today is the four seasons. We go through change just like the trees let the leaves go. I allow myself to experience change with ease. And notice that there's two doves of peace. The, the, the doves represent peace. The trees has its seasons as it goes through its seasons and cycles, knowing that the leaves will come back even after they start to fall off. Um, the, the sun will come up tomorrow. Um, you know, it, it's about accepting. Uh, I allow acceptance with ease for change. So again, your card this week is, I allow myself to experience change with ease. We're all going through change and change is still coming for us, guys. Domestic harmony. Um, again, if you want to uh, follow my work, just go to markleanheart.com or internet search the intuitive prospector. And um, I look forward to doing a little bit of spiritual prospecting with you for your own spiritual transformations, healing, and of course, your own spiritual goal to find that diamond within. So uh, we're going to get ready for the Healing Cafe. It is 8.30. Uh, give me a few minutes to get all uh, synced up and um, uh, get going. But um, again, just practice today. Practice, work with the colors purple. Um, work with grace. Work with grieving and honoring your grief, uh, if that's where you're at with what's going on in today's society. But move forward with gratitude. Have an attitude for gratitude, because when we all start to move into that format of gratitude, it can make your life and the people around you a much better experience um, and more positivity. So 
you know, I always like to say with everything that I do and all the work that I do until our next soul adventure together, be kind, be caring, be compassionate. I've been saying it all year long. Um, we are going to have the great coming together. That prediction still sticks. Um, I've taken a lot of heat the last few weeks too, because I did predict a Biden win. I did predict 300 on the electoral college and 5 million by the popular vote. But that doesn't mean that I'm actually a Biden supporter. I just predicted it, but people want to put me in that. So um, here we are, but I also am predicting and seeing some great things coming for us on the great coming together, but there still will be some challenges ahead of us to work through. And it's really going to demonstrate the character and the grace of our country and how we uh, choose to come together or how we choose not to come together and, and go even farther apart, which I'm going to stay on the hopeful side on the uh, uh, optimistic side that we can do that because I believe in Americans. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you to all of our healthcare heroes, our veterans who are serving both active duty, retired, those that have given their lives to make democracy work, democracy work regardless. The people have spoken in a voice not seen uh, in a long time. And I'm very proud of all Americans for voting, voting, voting. That is a right, that is a privilege that many people have given their life to uh, to have democracy, because remember, freedom is not free, and our, our vets need to be honored. We honor them this week, and we also happy Remembrance Day to my friends and colleagues over in England. So have a great rest of your day. Let's get ready for the Healing Cafe, and we'll see you over in just a few minutes here on the Intuitive Prospector page. And uh, until then, dare to dream, dare to explore, dare to live. Namaste, everybody. Thank you.